Hoffman, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Shysters. So let's type in voices. V O I C E S. Do we have voices? No matches were found in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual? Well, shit. Let's check auditory. Oh, no auditory. So there's no voices. There's no auditory, as in auditory hallucinations. Let's type in audio. No matches were found. No voices, no audio, sound. No sound in the entire diagnostic manual. What is going on here? Were there not voices? You don't think they would be talking about this in 1952 to try to at least make their profession seem a little more, what's the word, valid? None of it is in this book. Not voices, not sound, not auditory hallucinations, none of it. People didn't hear voices in 1952, but Hollywood has you believing that they did. And the subversion of the past has you believing that they did, but they didn't. Now, even though voices and auditory hallucinations didn't exist before their drugs and uh, sound weapons and sonic weapons in general, but you have to remember that they were testing audio weapons in the 1950s, and by the early to mid-60s, it was somewhat weaponized. Now, it wasn't it, it, like set out in mass. You could hit anyone like you can now. You actually had to set up their surroundings and do things to their home to set this up. So it was, it was weaponized somewhat in the early 60s to mid 60s and was being used. Not on everybody, but it was being used out there. They were testing on people. They were testing on the wives and children and families of people who worked for the government. They were testing on all different sorts of people, people that already had a diagnosis of some type of mental illness, alcoholics, people that they considered bad genes. And the same people that run the psychiatric industry are the same people that run the eugenics programs. So of course they're going to target the same people that if you look to old eugenics papers and information, you will find a list of the same type of people that they target with these weapons now. Now this is the DSM-2, because they made a part two, right? This is from 1968, and like I said, sound weapons had been in use for some time, and they were fully experimenting on people at this point. So let's do a search through the DSM-2 and see what's hiding in there. Okay, here we go. Show me voices. Oh, Adobe Acrobat Reader has finished searching the document. No matches were found. Hmm. Let's go to auditory. I'm typing with one hand. Auditory. Well, what do you know? This is considered an alcoholic mental disorder. A common variety manifests accusatory or threatening auditory hallucinations in a state of relatively clear consciousness. <laughs> this condition must be distinguished from schizophrenia in combination with alcohol intoxication, which would require two diagnoses. The whole thing Let's see if there's another one. No, that's the only one. Alcohol induced. Nothing. 52, 68 brings up one because they weren't fully into this yet and invested in it, but they were softening people up to it. Norman Bates talking to his mother. He had the exorcist in what, 70? I think that came out, 70, 71. So you had all these I uh, think softening people up to these crazy possession states and uh, hearing voices and they, they, they weave it into horror. They weave it into horror 
they weave it into a paranormal, they weave it into cryptid lore, weave it into the UFO community, but yet in the diagnostic and statistical manual, auditory and voices didn't really exist in 1952 or 1968. 52 and 68, that's 16 years later, it still wasn't there, except for alcoholics. And, you know, somebody detoxing from alcohol if they're a really bad alcoholic, shit, they'll think their bowling bag is their dog sitting next to them. You know, those old men that would drink until they just had it coming out their pores and then, you know, detox after a six-month bender. And uh, that's just called poisoning. There's nothing, you know, there's no mental illness about it. You're poisoned. So think about this. I'm not telling you something. I'm showing you something. These people were possessed. They weren't driven. They were compelled, possessed to validify their freaky little mind cult. For real. And, and what is so crazy about this is you can go through the whole thing. They get longer and longer every time they release one of these. And each time they would invent something else. The last uh, I think it was 2007 or, or somewhere around that time, I could be wrong about that date, they started having boardrooms of these people inventing disorders such as giving women repackaged Prozac under another name and then calling the disorder premenstrual dysphoria disorder or some shit like that and then putting them on a psychological medication. Bipolar used to be back in the day, and it's not because people learned. It's not because people were learning more and we know more now. People say that all the time, and it's like, fuck off. People used to have ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. They called it manic depression. And then it got called bipolar. You're not manic depressive, you're bipolar. So you go up and down. Well, now suddenly, these bipolar people can now hear voices. Everybody's hearing voices. You know, yeah, he's totally a normal guy. He goes to his job every day, but he has a uh, paraschizo disorder. Some, you know, just you can make anything up. And that just means he hears voices once a day from 4 to 4.30. But, you know, keep him up on his meds. Everything's cool. It's fucking out of hand. It is insane. It is absolutely insane. So the whole point of this is to show you that the 1952 DSM-1 and the 1968 DSM-2 has no mention of voices and auditory hallucinations at all. The DSM-2 talks about it a little bit with alcoholics, which basically means you're poisoned. The DSM-1 doesn't mention it at all. So when I say in my videos, that people didn't used to hear voices. I mean, people didn't used to hear voices. And the proof is right there. I'm using their Bible, their Bible of validity, to show you that it wasn't in the DSM-1 at all. And then they started mentioning it in eugenic style alcoholics in DSM-2. So when you talk to these people about the past and their minds are subverted, you can use real information like their information to set it straight this is why they want everything digital because they can just go in and edit edit clip it out edit clip it out you can't do that with a book you can't do that with paper with a physical book with physical information this is why they're fighting misinformation they're fighting misinformation so they can censor their own information this is why they brought up and past uh, bills like the right to be forgotten, which means they can go through and erase somebody completely from the internet. That helps out people that want to be erased from the internet, but it also helps out them to erase people because they will be saying, you know what, this person needs to be forgotten. Just like they say, we don't say these people's names anymore in these news stories where, you know, schmooting happens. What they're going to start doing is just deleting people, the right to be forgotten. So it's important if you can get a hold of a DSM-1 and a DSM-2 